Hello everyone. Now today we are going to see velocity analysis of mechanism. So this velocity analysis for the any given mechanism is nothing but the relative velocity method we are seeing in the graphical part. So the velocity analysis of mechanism can be done into two parts. One is an analytical part, another one is the graphical part. So in this we are going to see the graphical part. So what is velocity? Velocity is the vector quantity which is having both magnitude as well as direction. And this velocity vector component, which is always acting perpendicular to the link length for any given mechanism. And as we know, velocity is a vector quantity. So its magnitude is we have to define. And this magnitude can be found out by using the formula V is equal to R into omega, where R is nothing but it is the link length and omega is the angular velocity of the given thing in the mechanism. Now, here we will see how the velocity analysis for any given mechanism can be done. Here we will continue our study of the basic velocity analysis concepts. The next result we will look at is about relative velocity of one point with respect to another point in the same rigid body. So suppose we have this rigid body given to us shown in red here and it is in motion right now and we are going to look at the velocity of B with respect to A. Suppose that velocity is directed as shown here. In that case, we can split that relative velocity into two components, one perpendicular to AB and the other along AB. The component along AB suggests that B will start moving towards A, thereby shortening the distance between them. But a distance between two particles of a rigid body can never alter. And therefore, the direction of velocity like this is not possible. For the same reason, even this direction is not possible because that will separate the two points AB, again, an impossibility for a rigid body. So the only choice we are left with is this direction or the perpendicular direction to AB. So here is our conclusion that the velocity of a point relative to another point in the same rigid body will always be directed perpendicular to the line joining them. Now, what about the magnitude? That's easy to. If the distance between A and B is not altering, then B can only move in a circular motion relative to A. And the velocity in circular motion is given by the radius AB multiplied by the angular velocity omega. So velocity of B relative to A is the distance AB multiplied by omega. This result helps us locate the velocity image of one point relative to velocity image of another point in the same rigid body. To get the next result, suppose we have three particles A, B and C arbitrarily chosen in a rigid body like this forming a triangle. And suppose we start plotting a velocity diagram using the relative velocities between these particles. Then we will get three lines. Okay? The relative velocity between B and C, B and A, and A and C. And by the previous result, we know these relative velocities are perpendicular to these physical lines that join these three points. So we have two triangles now, one in the space diagram, one in the velocity diagram, and their corresponding sides are perpendicular to each other. So obviously these two triangles will be similar to each other. Now this result helps us to get the velocity image of any point in a rigid body, provided we know velocity images of two points in that rigid body. Because after that, all we need to do is construct a similar triangle. The special case of this is that suppose this triangle is a degenerate triangle. So these three points are collinear. In that case, we only have to consider the ratio in which one point divides the line that joins other two points. 
Let us now apply these concepts to an actual problem. So we'll start with the simple four bar, say A, B, C, D, like here, where A, D is fixed and the angular velocity omega of A, B is provided to us. We start the velocity diagram by plotting the velocity images of the fixed points A and D, this lowercase A and D, coinciding in a single point. Next, we take this purple link. The relative velocity between its ends A and B is shown in purple here. And these two purple lines will be perpendicular to each other. Similarly, we have drawn a line perpendicular to this green line and a blue line in the velocity diagram perpendicular to this blue link. So the velocity diagram is complete. But does it mean that we have solved the entire velocity profile of the mechanism? Unfortunately, no. All that we have done is found the velocities of these links and points at a particular configuration. The next moment, the mechanism is going to move assume a different orientation like this and the velocity diagram should also alter because this purple line has to remain perpendicular to this purple line and this green line has to remain perpendicular to this green line and so on. So the velocity diagram actually alters like this as the mechanism moves. Okay, so this was the basic about the velocity analysis. Now, how the velocity analysis problems are solved in a graphical way? So, first of all, the mechanism is given. So, in front of you, this is the four bar chain mechanism whose configuration link lengths are given, such as fixed link length as 150 mm, then 40 mm is the crank, and uh, coupler length is the 150 mm, and last rocker is the 80 mm. So, initially, first of all, we have to plot this uh, configuration diagram to a particular scale. So, now here we have taken one is to two scale. Then for the given mechanism, either of the link will be having the angular velocity or the RPM is given. So here in this uh, mechanism, if you see here, 120 RPM is given for the crank. So you know what is velocity formula that is the nothing but multiplication of the link length into omega. So with the help of formula that is 2 pi n by 60, we can directly get the angular velocity of this link AB. Then how to plot the velocity image principle or velocity diagram. So this is the velocity diagram or velocity polygon. So initially from the given mechanism, you have to first of all locate the fixed point. That is now here, the fixed points are A and B. So here we are plotting one point that is A and D. So for our velocity, we are using small letters and for configuration diagram, we are using capital letters. So here, first of all, you are plotting the fixed point that is A and D. Then afterwards, we are yet knowing the velocity of link AB, which is perpendicular to this link plane. So this, uh, and it is particular in some magnitude as we are having this values. So you have to just draw one line, which is perpendicular to this link AB having some magnitude in this way, which is perpendicular to this link plane AB. So you will get directly the B point. Then afterwards, the velocity, well, here we don't know the magnitude, but we know the direction. So here this velocity of link PC is perpendicular to this link and velocity of CD is perpendicular to this link. So from this point D, you will draw one locus of line which is perpendicular to this link length CD. So this will be the locus which is perpendicular to link length CD and this will be the locus which is perpendicular to link length PC. So both these locus, they will meet at one common point. So this point is nothing but what? The C point. So from this velocity diagram, you can directly get the velocities of link BC. This is BC, then DC. Okay, so in this way, we will be having the velocity of the each and every link. And from velocity, and if you know the link length, then ultimately we will get the angular velocity of that respective links. So now here we will see one analysis of problem for the velocity. Over here, we have been given four things. Number one, a mechanism. It is a six bar. Number two, all the link lengths. Number three, an angle 
that defines a certain configuration of this mechanism. And number four, the angular velocity of one of the links. Now this being a single degree of freedom mechanism, in theory, knowing the velocity of one link should allow us to calculate the velocities of all other links. So let us start by drawing the mechanism to a given scale first. And this diagram is called as the configuration or space diagram. It represents a certain configuration position of this mechanism. Next, we will start with the velocity diagram, where we will be plotting the velocity images of all the points in the configuration diagram. The convention that we follow is capital letters are used in space diagram, while velocity diagram will use lowercase letters. We start by what is known. So we'll start from this link OA and its point O is stationary. So it can be immediately plotted. So we have plotted the fixed point O or its image rather over here. Then we'll move on to point A here. It is in circular motion. So its velocity will be perpendicular to the radius OA and its magnitude will be OA, the length, multiplied by omega. So we have plotted our first line. Next, we proceed to point C. We know that with respect to A, point C will execute a circular motion. So velocity of C relative to A will be perpendicular to AC. So we can at least plot the locus of C. It should be somewhere on this line. We don't know yet where. Next, we will take one more clue from C's velocity, and that is C is on the slider, constrained to slide in this vertical guide. Since this guide is fixed, that is the absolute velocity of C. So we can plot that from our absolute stationary point O. So this is another locus of velocity of C. And wherever these two meet, that is where our point C will be. So we have found the velocity image of C. The velocity image of B will be situated on this line AC in the same ratio as this AC. So we can divide it in that same proportion, in the same ratio and get the image of B. From B, we can proceed to point D over here. Again, D will be executing a circular motion relative to B. So velocity of D will be perpendicular to BD. So we can get that locus. That is our sixth line. And D is also constrained to slide in this slider whose angle is known, whose direction is known. So that is another locus we can plot. Since this guide is fixed, it is related to O. Wherever these two intersect, that is our point D. So we have essentially finished the velocity diagram because we have found the velocity image of every point in the space diagram over here. Next, we read off all the velocities from the velocity diagram. And since these are linear velocities, they are directly applicable to these sliders. As for the angular velocities, we need one extra step. For example, to find the angular velocity of link BD, we need to take its velocity image, the lowercase BD, scaled off to the velocity scale and divide it by the actual length capital BD from the space diagram. That will give us the angular velocity of link BD. The same need to be repeated for link AC as well. The sense of the angular velocity can be found by the direction in which D is moving relative to B. So here, the sense will be counterclockwise. Thank you.